we're going to talk about body condition scoring alpacas. This is fundamentally the most important husbandry tool that you will need in order to manage your herd effectively. Fortunately, with a little bit of practice, it's an easy skill to master. Why is it so important? Well, basically for most of the year, our alpacas are covered in fleece of gradually increasing depth. This makes it pretty hard to see changes in condition and you really need to get your hands on the animal to actually properly evaluate that. Weighing is definitely also important and I'd encourage you to have a set of scales so that you can monitor the growth of young careers and also monitor changes in, in individual animals that might be sick but also so that you can dose medications appropriately such as wormers and things like that. In addition, if you have a pregnant animal, as it gets into advanced pregnancy in the last few months of pregnancy, a, a pregnant female can be actually gaining weight but losing body condition and if you only weighed you might miss that important uh, problem. Body condition scoring is going to allow a detection in changes in body condition. That can be on an individual animal where it might reflect poor individual animal health but also if you're finding it across the board in multiple animals it could be indicative of a general herd health problem. So for example if all of your animals are gaining weight or most of your animals are gaining weight that could suggest that you're overfeeding your animals while if they're all losing weight or most of them are losing weight that could obviously suggest that you're either underfeeding them or it could potentially point to a, uh, a general herd health problem such as uh, worms or coccidia. There are two main locations that we body condition score our packers. Uh, we'll come to the other sites in a minute which um, help to pigeonhole them into a few more boxes. But the two main sites are um, over, over the midline of the back of the animal. Literally put your hand right in the middle of the animal's back between the, the, the neck, bottom of the neck and the tail. So in the middle of the back you are feeling fat and muscle cover overlying the spine. You're feeling the muscle that's laid down between the, the dorsal spinous processes of the spine, that's the, the knobbly bit that runs down the middle of the spine there, and also the lateral spinous processes of the vertebrae that stick out sideways at about this level. So you're feeling where muscle is laid down in between those sites and then fat might be laid down over the top of those. Next, we can slide our hand down to the last few ribs at about the same location not a little bit further back, you can feel the last few ribs under your fingers in that location there. What you're feeling for there is muscle between the ribs and also fat cover. You should be able to uh, feel the ribs but not fit your fingers between them. They should feel nice and healthily um, covered. When I body condition score, I teach people to body condition score on a 1 to 10 scale. Some people like a 5 scale. I like a 10 scale, it allows me to get a little bit more variability in condition. At times I will body condition score half scores and occasionally quarter scores in order to uh, de detect uh, individual differences a little, bit, a little bit more. So what is an ideal body condition score? I like to see most animals with a body condition score of about 5.5 to 6 at all times. Obviously there will be some variation in that as their energy demands increase, particularly females in the early part of lactation will be using more energy so it's harder for them to keep up but we want to always try to aim for a five and a half to six at all times. So five and a half to six, what does that feel like? When you put your hand over the middle of the spine you should be able to feel that it's very slightly rounded, okay, either side of the spine. When you feel over the ribs you should be able to feel the ribs but not fit your fingers between them. They should feel nice and healthy and covered. When you get to a, um, a 5 out of 10, you'll be able to put your hand flat between the dorsal spinous processes and the lateral spinous processes. There shouldn't be any convexity, any, any, any roundedness, and there shouldn't be any dishing either or concavity. So 5 out of 10 would be flat and slightly less flesh cover over the ribs. Progressively down then to a 1 out of 10, that would be when the knife, that when the spine is, is knife edge thin um, and really concave on either side of the spine and you'd be able to fit your fingers between the ribs and it would feel very, really very uncomfortable. Uh, that would be a 1 out of 10. When you go fatter from a 6 out of 10, you'll progressively find that the back becomes more rounded until when you get to a 10 out of 10, it's literally as flat as a coffee table. Um, that, would be, that would be very obese. 
So how can you differentiate these animals in between a 6 and a 10 out of 10? Well, there's a few little ways that you can try to pigeonhole those, and I'll teach you those tips now. If you move to the back of the animal, okay, at the back of the animal, if you lift up the tail, males don't tend to like this particularly much when you get a bit too close to their testicles, but if you have a little look around the anus there, you will see that there's a little bit of dishing either side of the anus, just above the points of the pelvis, which you can see there. So it should be dished in that area there. When they get to about a seven and a half out of 10, you'll start to see fat pads developing in this area here. If you tap in that area, you'll literally see the little fat pad wobbling, okay? It can be a little bit easier to see in females because they have a slightly different conformation at the back end. Males tend to be a bit flatter, so it can be harder to see. Um, but that um, appears at about a seven and a half out of 10. Once you get to an eight out of 10, they will start to develop fat pads up in the brisket area here. When this happens, you can actually see that from a distance because the fleece will actually stand out at a funny angle because normally it's very, fairly concave in that area and the fleece is all angled together. Um, whereas when there's fat pads, it tends to stick out at a more funny angle. So you might be able to see that visibly once they get to an eight out of 10. Sometimes after that, when they're really fat, they can actually develop pads of fat anywhere over the body. That's fairly unusual and usually associated with an animal that is, is really far too overweight and does need to go on a diet. Right, you will also find differences between different types of animals. Suris and Wakayas will body condition score differently. Um, Suris tend to, uh, because of the way their fleece falls, they do tend to store a little bit more uh, fat and muscle around the spine for a little bit more insulation from cold weather. So they tend to be more solid over the middle of the spine and the feel over the rib cage can be a more true indicator of their um, real body condition. Same is true for working males, tend to be more muscly over the, over the spine. So you will find that again, the caudal rib cage is a little bit more reflective of their true body condition. Finally, as animals get a little bit older, certainly from, from 10, 10 years of age or so, you will find again rib cages are more useful because uh, they tend to always just be a little bit more dished either side of the spine. So if it doesn't quite tally up, go with what you're feeling on the rib cage instead. Once you've done your body condition scoring, you're going to need to write it down. There's no point doing this unless you're going to keep records of it so that you can look back and perhaps spot trends over time, uh, which can be useful. No amount of, uh, of remembering is going to substitute for that because the more animals that you have, the harder it is to remember these sort of things accurately. Much easier to keep records. You can always go back to it and check. Um, I always recommend that you do body condition scoring on a monthly basis. Uh, if you are having particular problems, then you can certainly do it more frequently than that. Um, but at a minimum, it should be done on a, on a monthly basis. Also, you will find that individuals, um, myself and, uh, and my lab tech here, uh, my, my assistant, um, will probably body condition score differently from each other, at least to begin with. That's okay, as long as you're aware of this, because if you're recording one person's body condition score and the next month you're recording somebody else's, there might be a difference that isn't actually real. So when you're learning how to do this, learn how to do it together, and then hopefully um, there won't be um, differences that aren't there when you go back and look into your records. Um, that's about it really. I think uh, that should give you a good summary on how to perform body condition scoring. Um, just uh, practice it regularly if you're just starting out. Practice makes perfect and once you've got the hang of it, it really is uh, a very useful skill to have in your, um, in your herd management repertoire.